Hello, tubers. This is Kurt with Edibles and Exotics coming to you from sunny Mesa, Arizona. And uh, I've been away for about two weeks now. Uh, I haven't had time to do any videos, but uh, in the past two weeks, the plant nursery business down at the Mesa Marketplace swap meet has exploded. So I'm having a hard time keeping the place stocked. I drive a, uh, a Jeep, okay, a Jeep Wrangler, and I can't get that many plants in there. Um, so I'm kind of limited to how many I can bring down at a time. I really need to get some sort of van or something like that uh, just to make life easier. I'm sick of the Jeep anyway. It's noisy and clunky and I don't do any four wheeling anymore. So it's kind of you know, just a gas guzzling, money hungry piece of crap vehicle. <laughs> so uh, anyway, um, I, I don't know what happened. Uh, Everyone, I, I think I said in previous videos, everyone said, hey, you got to start a Facebook uh, business page. And so I did that. Uh, I'm on Google, so you can actually search for edibles and exotics and my address and everything, business information, pictures, all that stuff pops up. Uh, I'm sure that's helping a lot. Um, as far as online marketing, I've um, been selling on OfferUp for years kind of dead i don't think too many people are using offer up anymore i think it's kind of you know ancient history um craigslist kind of hit or miss i get some business from that advertising my plants um uh, not so much as it used to be either um facebook marketplace i've been marketing on there uh, all my plants that i have for sale or not all but a lot of them um especially the the more rare hard to find stuff and i've been killing it so uh i've had tons and tons of people coming by um i don't want to miss out on sales so what i do is if it's after hours because i'm only open friday saturday and sunday during the day if it's after those hours or during the week uh i've been telling people hey i'm i'm at greenfield in the 60 you can meet me at my house and same price same everything just come by i'll have your plant for you bring cash. If you want to pay by card, you can pay by card too. Those are the only two payment methods I accept. I don't do Zelle or any of that sort of stuff. It's just uh, strictly what a business would accept. So um, quick story about uh, two weeks ago, my daughter and I, my seven-year-old, uh, on the way home, I said, hey, let's go stop at the Lowe's real quick. I need to get some dirt and stuff like that. So we were over there and uh, I was just walking around, seeing what their plants looked like and then walked over by the figs. And there was a, a couple over there, probably about my age, uh, looking at figs. And I said, hey, you guys looking to buy a fig? And they're like, yeah, we're thinking about it. I said, well, you know, I got a plant nursery over at the Mesa Marketplace swap meet. And I told them, I said, I guarantee my figs are cheaper, way cheaper, <laughs> are bigger and look way more healthy. I said, uh, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but you know, if you want to come down and, and check it out, you know, just, I'm open tomorrow. And, uh, they said, Oh yeah, we'll think about it. So I didn't see them the next day, but two days later they showed up and they looked at my plants and they said, Oh my God, you're right. They're like, yours are so much cheaper, so much bigger and so much more healthy. And, uh, you know, I, I told them all about the plants. Well, long story short, they wound up buying, uh, a medium-sized fig tree they wound up buying a my largest pakistan mulberry um, which was probably about eight or nine feet tall and, and probably about seven feet wide um, and they bought a couple other things and they said they were going to be back too so hopefully i see them this weekend today is uh saturday i think it's what december 2nd something like that so i'm open one more day and then it's uh back to the daily grind for me but uh it's been tough guys i've been uh running around trying to uh find locally grown plants that i deem healthy enough for me to uh repot into a grow bag and grow for a couple of months and resell and uh i met a guy uh i think it was on craigslist his name is john he's out in glendale if you're watching what's up brother um he had some uh, mulberry trees and a uh, bunch of different varieties. Uh, he had Shangri-La, which I have Shangri-La too, um, but he had uh, 
Turkish. Um, he had Black Beauty. He had Black and White Persian. So I bought his whole supply out. Um, some of them were smaller. Some of them were bigger. Um, he had them outside, so they were starting to go dormant. Um, which some of my white mulberries were do the, doing the same thing. So he's growing them great. They look good. Um, I have them inside right now under heat lamps and grow lamps. Uh, I'm going to get them to leaf out and look a little bit better and fuller. And then I'm going to bring them down to the nursery and sell those. So probably, uh, I'm thinking probably in a month from now, if you guys are interested in those varieties, let me know. Um, as far as I know, in the Valley, he's the only one selling those and he don't have any more because this guy right here bought him out. Um, but in the future, uh, I'm probably going to talk to him. Uh, I got his number and everything. And, uh, you know, hopefully I can either get cuttings from him or maybe get him to grow some plants for me wholesale and resell them. Um, there was a gentleman named uh, Lee Hung. He came in. He's uh, originally from Vietnam. He uh, owns a catering business and he was looking to buy a guava and he was down there yesterday on Friday and I'm not there on Fridays. My wife is. And like I said before, she's not a plant nerd like me. So, you know, she could help people out a little bit, but she didn't really know the difference between the varieties. And I did have stuff kind of scattered about because last weekend when I left, I sold a lot and I had to plug a lot of irrigation lines and I didn't group things the way I should have. So things were kind of scattered about. There were some guavas over here, some over there. They weren't all grouped together like they should have been. Um, so he was looking at one. Uh, he already had that variety and he was asking my wife a bunch of questions. She didn't know the answer. She gave me a call. <laughs> I tried to talk him through it and he said, you know, what? I'll come back tomorrow. So he came back today. This guy was awesome. Super nice guy. Um, if you're watching, hello <laughs> but uh yeah he came down we talked this morning for probably an hour um we really hit it off i like the guy i enjoyed the conversation um you know he was giving me uh some insight into people that he knows that sells that grow locally and sell um so i don't know maybe in the future i might be able to contact these people and try to work out a deal who knows you know like i said uh, i'm not against reselling plants i'd rather get them from People that are growing them just like I do or you guys do, I'd rather not get them from a wholesale supplier. I'd rather get them from the average Joe, you know, because I know they're going to be uh, cuttings or air layers or something like that that are used to our climate. They're proven growers here and they're grown good because these guys care about their plants just like I do, you know. So he wanted to buy an guava, uh, an Asian white guava that a, uh, a friend sold me. Uh, I didn't grow it myself. Someone else did, but uh, yeah, he wound up buying that. He was super happy with it. It was a variety he didn't have and uh, nice healthy plant. So I wish him the best with that. I'm sure he's going to grow it and it's going to grow great. I don't see any problems with it. Great plant. So I do have a couple of guava varieties that I'm starting right now. I got some Mexican cream, which are, they're one of my favorite guavas. Um, if you guys have never had a Mexican cream guava, they're, they're really good. They don't have that, uh, gross, uh, dirty foot smeller taste to them. They, they're really sweet, a little grainy. They're a yellow guava, yellow skin, kind of like a creamy yellow flesh. Um, I'm growing those. I'm growing uh, Peruvian pink. I'm go growing uh, Malaysian red, uh, Thai guavas, and I think, uh, what was it, Mexican pink. So I should have those available uh, hopefully in the springtime um, as starter plants, maybe like a foot tall or so. Um, and as the summer goes on and they get bigger, um, the price is going to go up. So I'm going to try to get those out there and I'll, I'll let you guys know when I bring them in. That way you guys get first dibs, you know, as opposed to some other people off the street that aren't dedicated growers and, and not dedicated to the channel like you guys are. So I want to show you guys my appreciation and get you those plants when they're young and cheap and healthy. So uh, another plant uh, that I've really been selling the heck out of is Queensland bottle trees. So as far as I know, uh, I'm the only one in the valley selling them. All right. 
I know uh, I gave Alan down at Queen Creek Drop Pulls one a while back, and I know he got some in uh, from Florida. Um, I don't think he got that many, but he was selling them, and uh, he's probably run out by now. Um, I grow them. I start batches of those every like three, four months, so I always have them going. Um, right now, I sold out of my big ones. Um, the big ones, they were like this big, and uh, I priced them so damn cheap that i kind of screwed myself on it uh i was selling them for 60 bucks they should have been more like 160 or up um i've seen them online for like 400 bucks i don't feel comfortable selling them for that price but uh yeah they should have probably been closer to 100 bucks i sold two of those to a a couple i think out in aj and uh super healthy plants they were really happy with them um, i don't think they understood what kind of deal they were getting though um but right now I have, I got a ton of Queensland bottle trees. They're about nine months old from seed. Um, I grew them right here in my backyard. So they were not grown in a greenhouse. They were not grown indoors. They were started as seeds in a bin and grown outside. And they're still outside, except for the ones I brought down to the nursery. They're in my, my nursery area, which is somewhat like a greenhouse. It's got a greenhouse covering, but it is the whole front of it's kind of open to the air. So it does get warmer in there during the day. And it's not going to get frost at night because it's, it's, you know shielded from the elements in that respect but uh i still have a lot at my house um i still got a half a bin i got a pot up but those i've been selling for 20 bucks and they are in uh 12 inch grow bags um i am undercutting myself on those too because if you look online queensland bottle trees um they at that height you know anywhere from the six to one foot or six inch to one foot range they're going for about 40 bucks plus shipping and up so at 20 bucks and you don't have to pay the shipping it's a steal and uh i think a lot of people know that i think uh, a lot of people that look at it they're like man this is a cool tree they do a little research and they probably check prices and they're like damn that's a good deal so i've been selling those like crazy i, I think i sell probably three or four a day and uh they're all healthy trees. Like I said, they're, they've been growing outside, so they're proven winners. Um, if you do want buy one from me, um, what I've been recommending to people is they will make it through the, uh, the winter here. No problem. Um, unless you're out like, you know, way out in the desert, it, it freezes or a little bit up North, um, down here, they, they would make it through the winter outside. No problem. Um, especially in full sun. Uh, but what I've been telling people is, Hey, Keep it as an indoor plant until the spring. That way it puts on a little bit of size. So when you do bring it out in the spring, it's ready to grow. And over the summer, you know, it'll put on about two, three feet of growth, um, especially planted in the ground if it's in full sun and you keep it moist. So uh, I think people are really, they're like, all right, I'm going to do that. So um, again, they're in grow bags. So I also tell people, you know, keep it you know, just pick up the bag. If it's got a little weight to it, you're probably good. If it starts getting light, you know, give it a little bit of water. Um, Queensland bottle trees, they are from Queensland, Australia, um, but they are not really found in the tropical areas of Queensland. They're more found in what would be considered like the outback where it's a little more deserty. Um, they could tolerate temperatures down into the upper teens and they could tolerate temperatures well into where we get in the summer. Absolutely no problem. Uh, I got one in my front yard. But it's about a year old from seed and I, I planted it in my front yard beginning of last summer and it's on my watering schedule for my front lawn. It's literally surrounded by grass. So in the heat of the summer, it gets watered every hour on the hour for, I don't know, like three minutes or so, two minutes. And uh, it, I don't give it any special fertilizer. Whatever the lawn gets is what it gets. And uh, it put on uh, easily two feet of growth uh, over last summer. So... Uh, the cool thing about the Queensland bottle trees is they grow a trunk. It takes about five years. They grow a thin trunk. They kind of look like a Palo Verde. Um, they get branches. And over about five to seven years time, depending on how they're grown, it could be even a little less. Uh, they usually get about like eight feet tall or so, 10 feet tall. Um, that trunk starts to elongate. So when it puts out branches kind of low, it, it's nothing to be concerned about because the trunk is going to elongate as it grows and it's going to push those branches higher and higher. Um, <clears throat> when it gets to uh, that size, it starts forming its bottle trunk 
and the bottle trunk is basically formed by it absorbing water and storing it in its trunk kind of like a cactus you know when you when you starve a cactus of water it kind of shrinks up and then when you give it more it swells up and expands so that's what they do um they are a, t a true taproot plant, so they do have a giant taproot that goes very deep in the ground that also stores water. So after about two years or so, two, three years, depending on how you grow it, they're pretty drought tolerant. Again, drought tolerant doesn't mean they thrive. Um, if you don't water it in the summer, it's going to slow the growth down. If you water it, it's going to grow pretty, pretty fast. That's why I say it kind of depends, you know, how you care for it as to how fast it develops that bottle trunk and how big it gets how f that fast in that time frame. So you know, just like any other tree, the more you water it, the more you fertilize it, especially when it's hot and sunny out, the faster it's gonna grow, all right? Um, people say they're prone to root rot. I have not seen that. Um, I would assume if you kept it in warm temperatures and kept it soggy and sopping wet, it's probably gonna develop root rot. So root rot usually develops when soil temperatures are above 50. So it's a common misconception that when it's really cold, plants get root rot from being wet. Um, usually when it's really cold and the soil stays wet for a while, it depletes itself of oxygen and the plant actually dies that way. It's usually not rot. Um, what you could get though is if you keep it soggy over the winter, come springtime when the soil heats up, the bacteria in there that causes the root rot is going to really take over really quick. So. In the ground here, guys, um, if you're growing a bottle tree in the winter, let it dry out a little bit. It's cold. It's not transpiring that much. It'll be okay. Um, right now, this time of the year, I'm doing uh, every other day uh, at 1, 2, or actually, what is it? Uh, yeah, I think it's 1, 2, and 3 o'clock for one minute in my front yard. That's all it's getting. So, And that's every other day. And the soil stays pretty wet. You know, Usually by the next day, it's still pretty damp. So I'm probably going to cut that down uh, to maybe every three days pretty soon. And then, you know, as the weeks progress and it gets colder and colder at night, I'm going to really cut it down. So it's probably uh, the front yard where the bottle tree is. It's probably only going to get watered uh, maybe once a week for uh, three to four minutes. Not a lot. And, you know, I'll go out and check and adjust. It's uh, part of, you know, growing these kinds of plants. I've had a lot of people come down uh, to the plant nursery and I look at the bottle trees and they go, oh yeah, that's growing all over my neighborhood. Mm, no, I don't think so. Sorry. You know, there might be something with a similar leaf structure like eucalyptus or something like that, but there, there's no bottle trees growing in your neighborhood. All right. Um, unless there's someone out there that bought seeds online and grew it, there's no one else selling them. All right. I think uh, Moon Valley Nursery might have sold them maybe like 15, 20 years ago, but they don't sell them anymore either. So... If you're looking for bottle trees, you can buy seeds online. They're kind of pricey unless you, you got a source like I do. Um, or if you're looking for a, a jump start, I got nine month old, uh, six to 12 inch tall bottle tree trees that are ready to be taken home. So uh, back to the nursery, I've been selling like crazy. I sold out of all my big mulberry trees. Um, as you can see, this one behind me here, I, you can see the tin foil. <clears throat> this is a Pakistani mulberry. I have uh, tons of air layers going on it. And I need to get up there on a ladder in the spring and start air layering the top because this thing's like 25 feet tall. It's just getting to the point where it is so big that uh, when it puts out fruit, I'm not going to get it. The birds are going to get it and it's going to attract more birds. So I'd rather keep it low. Um, it's good for the summer because it shades the back of the house uh in the winter drops its leaves guys uh figs and mulberries they are deciduous um usually what i've noticed is around mid-december figs and mulberries start dropping their leaves and then around the beginning of february middle of february they start getting them back so um this guy should start dropping leaves soon it's a lot easier to air layer when you get up there on a ladder and you don't have to deal with all these leaves. You can actually see the branches. So I'm going to wait probably until, uh, I would say mid April, maybe the beginning of April and start my air layering process on that one. Uh, same thing. There's a Shangri-La behind you guys right there. And, uh, that's another one. It's getting about 20, I would say close in between, I don't know, maybe like 22 feet tall. 
it's uh it's getting pretty big so i'm gonna do the same on that it's starting to grow over the the common area behind the house and growing into the apple tree so i'm gonna air layer that down a little bit i'm gonna try to keep that one a little short i do like big trees and i'd love for this tree to get huge but when you're trying to propagate and stuff getting up there on a, a 50 foot tall ladder is a little dangerous so <laughs> We're going to keep it short. Um, I got some air layers going on my Ana Apple. I have to get some air layers going on my Golden Dorset as well. Um, I did a whole bunch of cuttings. I did a video on it. And uh, last year, guys, or, or last summer, when we had that stretch of like 118 for like weeks on end, I missed one day. All right. And I lost all the cuttings. They were all starting to root out. They were all doing good. Um, <clears throat> I potted a couple up. And I had those sitting next to the bins and I think like two or three bins, all of them dead in like one day. That's how fast it happens. Um, I wound up with three, three cuttings that I was able to save. Um, they made it for another like three months and they just never really did anything. And I just gave up on them. So we go with the air layers. Um, I've done apple cuttings, apple tree cuttings in the past. I never had that problem. It's just because it was so damn hot. Um, again, I think I told you guys I've lost, <laughs> last summer I lost a lot of potted plants, uh, over $300 in banana tissue cultures that I should have brought in. Um, they died the exact same time as the apple tree cuttings. Um, you know, it was just one of those things. I came home from work, exhausted, headache, dead tired, and I just passed out in a chair watching TV, woke up the next day, didn't even remember because I was so tired. Just missed the day of watering and like that, dead. So I was hoping to do an update video on that. Well, here it is. There's not really much of an update, but you can get some air layers going on that. They air layer super easy. If you ever done air layers on apple trees, um, I did a, a video a while back uh, on my neighbor's hong kong orchid and i i showed in that video a uh, an apple tree that was at my daughter's house that i air layered off my Anna apple and that was a that was done last winter middle of the winter and uh, i think i started it in like january removed it in like march planted it in april i think and uh it's doing fine it's growing like a weed for you know it was a i think like five feet tall or something like that and it's just it's growing great so you know, the apple trees, they air layer great. Uh, if you guys are scared of doing cuttings or whatever, try an air layer. I have a video on that. I'll put a link down in the description. Everyone seems to like my air layering video because it's super easy to follow and it works. <laughs> so, and it's cheap. Um, but yeah, if you guys are interested in air layers, I'll put a link down there. You can click on the link and take you to the video and you can see how to do it. So yeah, I sold out all my... Uh, my big Pakistanis, I got one big Shangri-La left, but unfortunately it's starting to go dormant. So I was hoping being in the, the nursery, that's kind of a quasi greenhouse, you know, that it would keep going, but the leaves are starting to turn and they're starting to drop. So I think, uh, that one is going to have to wait until, uh, probably the springtime. Uh, I doubt anyone's going to buy a, nine foot tall Shangri-La mulberry with no leaves, you know, right now it's still got some leaves, but you know, it's going to sleep. Like I said, so probably in another week, they're going to be all done. Um, I do have a lot of guavas over there. Um, I've been selling a lot of, uh, weeping mulberries. So I did a whole bunch of air layers on my weeping mulberry in the front yard. And I think I did a, uh, little walk, walk past that tree in a previous video when I was, uh, showing the yard and what it looks like, right? now which would well not now but a month ago um and uh yeah i got like i think like nine or ten air layers off of that and they're all doing pretty good so uh sold a couple of those one of them actually had fruits on it today uh i was gonna film it and show you guys but uh they're all putting out new growth and new, with new growth comes fruit so but a lady bought it so i wasn't gonna refuse the sale you know um but yeah, I got some weeping mulberries. Uh, some of them are, they're all 50 bucks. Um, I may have to juggle the prices around on those because they're actually starting to get pretty big. Um, but if you want one, I got them. Female, uh, Morris Alba Pendula, uh, weeping mulberries, fruiting ones, uh, air layers off of my tree. 
Um, normally what I recommend to people with those is I use a 12 foot piece of rebar or if you could weld, get two 12 pieces or whatever, weld them together, cut it to whatever length you want. But uh, mine, since they are air layers and they're not grafted, um, they lack the protein to have trunk strength. So if you get a, an air layer this big and like as thick as a pencil, if you don't stake it, it's just gonna bloop, flop right over. So I stake them the bamboo and I tell people when you plant it, get a piece of rebar, stab it into the ground and you train it up that rebar. And if you only want it 12 feet, when it gets to that, well, you're gonna sink two feet down. So let's say when it gets to 10 feet, let it weep from there and that's when it'll start weeping from there. So if you want it higher, you can make it go higher, but that stake's gonna have to stay in the ground for about three to four years. Once they get to about three to four years old, the trunk gets fat enough and strong enough to where it could support the top, no problem. So normally what they do with weeping mulberries is they're grafted. So they'll take a regular Morris Alba at, or a wild mulberry and they'll grow it just a straight stump or straight trunk coming out of the ground. They'll cut it and then they'll graft a weeping mulberry scion onto that and then it'll weep from there. I don't like grafted trees, you guys know that. Um, I think that's a weak point, a disease point. Um, I know they do grow in some places and people have had luck with them, but they're never gonna live that long. Minor air layers, they are complete weeping mulberries top to bottom. So if you're looking for a weeping mulberry that fruits, I got them, it's a guarantee. I'll tell you how to care for it. They're like any other mulberry, they grow super fast, full sun, uh, just regular neutral to 6.5 pH. Um, test your soil i got a video on that i'll put a link down in the description on how to test your soil and fertilize um you just want to keep your nutri uh, your nutrients in the middle range and you're good to go um they are deciduous so the cool thing about them is not only do they give you fruit and look cool because they weep but when they lose their leaves in the winter you have this gnarly kind of the stem never grows straight up. They kind of zigzag and bounce around and move around. And you can train it to look however you want, almost like a big bonsai. Um, you know, if you want the trunk to, to do one of these, you could do that. However you want to train it, because they're pliable, you know? You just tie it, you can put four rebars in and have it zigzag, and then when it gets to the top, let it weep. It'll be cool, you know? Um, but they lose their leaves in the winter, so you wind up with all these bare branches hanging down. Uh, you know, it looks like uh, just, octopus kind of hanging down it's really really cool really cool tree um they the branches grow so long they will hit the ground and they will creep along the ground like uh vines so you could do what i do and you could air layer them off and sell them or give them away whatever you want to do um you could do cuttings from them although the cuttings are a little difficult to root even though they are a morris alba they're not as easy as a regular non-weeping um, i don't know if it has to do with the protein they're lacking, I don't know, but I've got like a 50-50 shot when I root them um, via cutting, via air layer, 100%, easy as pie. They, they're the easiest mulberry I've found to root out, is the weeping mulberry. And I don't know if it has to do with the fact that the branch is hanging down, um, but I've never had them dry out. Um, they root out usually within a month. Um, and even if they don't root out too well, when I pot them up, even if they have like one or two roots, they, they continue to root out in the pot. Whereas some, you know, you'll wind up with issues and they die or whatever. The whole top dries up. These don't do that. I don't know why, but super cool tree to grow. Um, I got some contorted mulberries, um, air layering right now. Um, I have one that's got a root on it. I'm kind of hesitant to take it off. Uh, a guy on Facebook that is a fan of the channel, wants it so i think i'm going to kind of promise it to him i already told him you know hey when this thing's ready i'm calling you and letting you know if you still want it it's yours um but contorted mulberries are really cool they're a black mulberry from japan they get really big leaves because they're a morris negra so or from what i heard uh, they look like a black mulberry they got the black buds so i'm pretty sure it is um and they got the big leaves um so I'm going to try to get some of those going. I got a lot of Australian green mulberry cuttings or air layers going, but I also have a couple of cuttings going. I think I got one left. I had them in a bin with uh, some other cuttings and their water requirements were a little bit different. And I think I lost <laughs> like three or four of those. I got one going though. Um, 
But yeah, I got a whole bunch of those hair layers, uh, probably about like 30 going. Uh, my white mulberry back there, I got uh, over 50, over 50 hair layers going, uh, but it's just too damn cold out for these guys to root out. Um, I got black jacks going over there. I got brown turkey over there. I got um, George's unknown white Italian fig, which is one of my favorite figs. I got a couple of big ones going on that. I've already potted up a 12 footer. Um, it lost all its leaves, but it's cool enough out where not a problem. It's going to probably go dormant for the winter and then come spring, just explode with growth. Um, it's going to root out over the winter. Another misconception, guys, that plants don't do anything when it's cold out. We, we don't get cold enough for the ground to freeze. So the plant's roots, even though the top is dormant, the plant's roots are still growing, all right? It's, it's got enough energy built up into it that it could actually still grow roots. So if you, uh, if, if you do what I do and you're continuously air layering and doing cuttings and stuff like that, if you pot them up right now and they got roots, but you know, they're probably not going to grow because it's getting cold, they still will grow roots. So come springtime, you will have saleable plants or plantable plants or plants to give away or whatever. That should be pretty, pretty safe to, uh, turn over to someone else at that point. You know, they should be well rooted. And then when they leaf out, I usually give them like two or three weeks until they look nice and full and then gone. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is, uh, at my plant nursery, since it stays a little bit warm in there, because it is a greenhouse covering and it's pretty sunny, I think I'm going to set up a section over there for not for sale plants that are still rooting out, um, just to get them out of my yard. Cause I'm, I'm really out of space, you know, it's like a jungle back here to begin with. There's not that much sun because I got all these trees growing and I need more light for these guys to really start growing and it gets pretty good light in there a lot of reflected light on the inside too so i think i'm gonna start a little section back there um it'll help make it look a little fuller help educate some of the customers as to what i do how i do it you know people off the street i get a lot of people from uh canada and up north and they're not going to buy trees and i understand that because they don't live here so you know all this stuff pertains to them too if, if they want to you know, air layer an apple tree that grows there or, you know, this or that or whatever, some sort of heirloom tree in their grandparents' home or something or their neighbor or some, you know, some trees dying and they want to save it. Well, you know, I could show them exactly how I do it, you know, show them the plant, show them the stages, show them pictures, give them my YouTube channel and, you know, just to help people out. Cause I, I like doing that. I really like talking about plants and stuff. 90% of the people that come in are asking questions and I know they're not going to buy anything. I just enjoy answering their questions, giving them some, some help. And, uh, you know, who knows in the future, if they want something, they might come back and buy it from me because, you know, I'm not just some idiot salesman trying to make money off of them. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff going on. Um, I've been, Totally looking around, trying to find plants to resell. I am kind of running low on stock. Last weekend, my, my nursery was full. It looked great. It was so green, big, huge plants, big leaves. And now <laughs> it's a little sad looking because I sold so many, but I still get a lot of great plants, you know? Um, I got a lot of pineapple plants and, you know, a lot of other little things. I got, you know, a lot of stuff that grows in my yard, purple hearts and cactuses and Mexican petunias and elephants food and, you know, just a bunch of cool little things and palm trees. These guys come up all over my yard. I got a lot of palm trees going right there. Um, but that's basically how it's been. So, you know, the first like two, three weeks or something that I was open, I was like, man, this is going to hurt bad financially, you know. But uh, in the past two weekends, I did so good um i've made enough to cover uh all my bills for at least two months and also buy supplies that i need um pay off <laughs> some of my credit card debt that i incurred with the business and uh still have some money left over to uh replenish my stock that i sold because i'm trying to get some more variety in there i don't want to be one of those guys that has like i got this variety and this and this and that's it you know, I want to have a bunch of different stuff. So I'm always out there looking for, you know, cool plants and stuff that, you know, I might not like, or I might not have growing in my yard, but you know, people want them. So, you know, that's kind of what I'm after right now. Um, 
you know, I try to look online and try to find people. A lot of people are selling stuff at retail prices. Um, and I understand that, you know, some people, you know, they're just looking to make top dollar. They don't care. Um, but I'm trying to find the guys that are like me that, you know, are willing to sell plants to someone else for, you know, a decent price. I don't like if I buy something from someone, let's say on Facebook or Craigslist or something, you know, I'm not marking it up like an incredible amount. I'm just marking it up enough to basically cover my gas, get some variety in there and make a couple of bucks. So, you know, if I could bring all this stuff in and centralize it, you know, that way, you know, if, if a lot of people in Glendale are selling stuff and you guys live down here, no one wants to drive to Glendale, but if I can make one trip out there, collect a whole bunch of different plants and bring them back down here, now you guys don't have to drive that far. You know, and if you're paying five or $10 more than what they were asking, I'm sure you guys aren't gonna mind at all. You know, if it saves you three, four hours of driving and, and like 40 bucks in gas, you know? So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, I got a lot of seeds going. Um, I ordered a whole bunch of seed trays. I got my master bathroom, which is over there. You can kind of see the, the red light in the window and I got some grow lights going. Um, so my master bathroom, it's got that big window. It gets some pretty decent sun. I got some grow lights on the top. Uh, I got some heat lamps in there. It's pretty warm there to begin with. And that's where I put plants that I'm trying to get the leaf out, wake up, look better so I can resell them. Or, you know, stuff from my yard that's starting to go dormant. Oh, bring it in there. It, it perks right back up. And that's where I got all the uh, mulberry trees from uh, John. And uh, my next uh, thing is I want to get a... Uh, some, I got some racks. I want to get uh, like a makeshift greenhouse going in the backyard here. Put a heat lamp in there. I like using heat lamps because they are radiant heat. So whatever that light hits warms up. It doesn't so much warm up the air. So it's not a lot of wasted energy. Um, there is a little bit of energy wasted in the light energy and the heat of the bulb itself. But it puts out a lot more heat by what it hits than trying to heat the air because so if you try to heat a whole greenhouse it's very expensive if you're doing it with electricity or gas or anything like that if you're doing it with you know a compost pile or solar heating stuff like that that's a little more economic i don't have the time or the room for that um i think a lot of people make that mistake with greenhouses they're thinking i gotta heat all the air in the greenhouse you don't have to do that you gotta heat the surface of a plant um heat lamps are going to be your best bet and you're going to want the ones that you'd use for like baby chickens where it's red with the uh, UV light shining down. Um, they really don't cost that much to operate. They're very cheap. They last a long time. And uh, that's what I would recommend. If you're doing a greenhouse, give it a try. Uh, you know, put some plants in the corner, shine a light on them and see what it does. I guarantee it'll help out a lot. Um, it also keeps the soil in your plant pots or bins or seed trays, whatever you got, it'll keep those nice and warm too because that heat will travel down through them. Um, I'm not looking to, to raise the temperature in the greenhouse. I'm looking to keep the plants warm and that's how I do it. I, that's how I frost protect my plants too. Heat lamps shining on them, blanket over the top, keep the temperatures above about 35 degrees and we're good. Frost forms on leaves above freezing. So especially when you get closer to the ground, it gets colder. So that's what I recommend. Just don't light your house, yard, or anything else on fire. Trying to copy what I say to do. Be smart about it, guys. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I got some, uh, some shelving, some plastic PVC shelving. I have leftover greenhouse cover from when I built my plant nursery greenhouse top. So my plan is to get some seed trays in there. Um, I got some deep 52 cell seed trays or 54, I forget which, um, three inch deep, one and a half inch wide per cell that I am going to start a, a buttload of trees in. And those, that's what I'm going to do. They're going to sit out here, probably somewhere where it gets full sun, heat lamp over the top, maybe some foam just to keep the heat in a little bit. And they are going to sit there and root out all winter and hopefully in, uh, 
two months, two and a half months, it should be warm enough where I don't have to worry about frost or anything like that. And I can get those from their seed bins into grow bags and uh, give them another two, three months for them to get big and springtime will be here. And back to uh, the cheaper plants for you guys, starter plants. So I've learned a lot guys. Um, what I think really made a big difference with my retail nursery spot is two things. Filling it up big time with plants, even if they're not for sale plants, most of them are for sale. I'm still trying to get a lot more plants down there. I got a tiny little Jeep, limited, but every day I, I try to bring plants down there. Even when I'm not open, I'm trying to go down there in the mornings, check on the irrigation, bring the plants in, set them up, go to work, and uh, so that was one thing. The fuller it looks, the better it looks. It brings people in, they, they walk by and, oh my God, look at all these plants, you know? All these weird plants. And the next biggest thing, guys, if you're gonna do this yourself, signs, signs everywhere. Um, my daughter made me some awesome signs. She's an awesome artist, my older daughter. Uh, awesome artist, she made me some signs. My wife got laminate sheets, laminated them. I hung them up, awesome signs. Um, and then my wife, she's awesome. She's dressed the place up. She's put Christmas lights up, pine cones and vases with plant cuttings rooting out and stuff and flowers. And, you know, she did a really good job on it, tablecloth and everything. Um, but my wife runs a Dollar Tree store. And she manages the store and you get a lot of stuff for Dollar Tree. She doesn't get a discount. Come on, Dollar Tree, you know, help your employees out. But anyway... Um, she got me these little signs. Um, they're like uh, poster board kind of cut out fluorescent, you know, pink, green, yellow, orange, blue, um, you know, and they're like little like pow looking signs, you know, and um, bubbles and stuff like that. So, you know, I wrote on there uh, guava trees, um, you know, fig trees, banyan trees, pineapples, bananas, you know, and I, I put them on uh, bamboo stakes. So they were elevated a little bit because unfortunately I got to keep most of my plants on the ground because gravity fed irrigation, they can't be as high as the water tank. Um, if they get that high, they don't get watered. So everything's pretty much on the floor. So, you know, I put the signs up and they're just, when you walk by the, all these fluorescent signs popping up, fig trees and this and that, and that really brings people in. Uh, another thing I did, uh, just, just to see how it'd go. I put a, a smaller Pakistani, it was 60 bucks, but it was outside my backyard and it was kind of being shaded by these papayas and stuff. And it got leaves like this big. They were huge. They're like as big as a Shangri-La leaf or bigger, you know, just massive, massive leaves, you know, whereas these guys, you know, I mean, they're, they're big, but they're not that big, you know, cause it's in full sun, um, and, you know, just covered in leaves. And it was just, you know, kind of thin stalked and everything super healthy plant. Don't get me wrong. And it's going to grow like a weed for them, but, um, 60 bucks, you know, it's probably about like, three and a half feet tall and wide with these giant leaves. And I put a sign on it that said, King of Trees, Pakistani Mulberry, take me home today, only 60 bucks. That lasted two days. I had all these people walking by touching the leaves. They're like, oh my God, I thought it was fake. I said, no, everything in here is real. It's all grown from my yard. And you know, they were all super impressed. And um, I had a lady come down and uh, she bought some banyan trees, absolutely loves banyan trees. And she was like me, why doesn't everyone else grow these? They're, they're the most beautiful trees. I don't know. So yeah, she bought a banyan tree and then she's like, I love that Pakistani. I'm coming back for that. So she, she, <laughs> she comes back like an hour later, bam, bought the Pakistani. So signage guys, if you're doing this signage, signage, signage in your face, fluorescent popping signs going to help big time. Um, even if you're a regular nursery and you're watching this, don't put those dopey little freaking signs, you know, man, nah, you know, this is this and that's that. Put a big in your face sign, man. Get it, you know, loud and proud. <laughs> um, but yeah, get those suckers up there and signage helps big time. Um, fill it up, signage. All right. Those are my two number two things, right? Or Number one and number two. I think signs are definitely number one. That really helped. Um, but another thing I need to do, I need to get banners. I need to get banners made. I got my logo and everything. And 
Um, my wife got that for me for uh, my birthday and I was going to use it in the backyard. Now I got it there. Um, I think I might hang that on the back of my water tank and get some bigger signs made up. That way people could see from the back. Um, like I said, I am on Google Maps now, so you can type in edibles and exotics. It'll drop the pin right where I am. So if you go into the marketplace swap meet, you can go right to my pin, right to the back and walk in. You don't have to park at the beginning and walk all the way through if you don't want to. Although there is a lot of cool stuff, but hey, go to me first, spend your money with me and then walk around and buy the other stuff. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you could, you could buy your plants, park literally right next to my booth and I'll help you load them up. All my plants, I got bags. I bag up the bottom since they are in grow bags. Um, if it's a big pot, I put it in a garbage bag. I tie it off. I stake everything. Make sure it's good for transport and everything. And when you plant it, um, so you don't get any damage. I, I make sure it's not going to roll around on you. Um, if you show up and you want to do it your way, fine. But you know, if you kill your tree driving home, hey, that's on you. Um, but yeah, uh, that helps too. You know, a lot of people say, "Ah, oh, I want to buy some, but I don't want to walk around with it." I say, "Hey, leave your plant here." When you leave, park right over here, right next to me. Walk in, I'll have your plants, you pay for them, I'll have them all ready for you, you pay for them. I'll help you put them in your car and you can go. That way you don't have to walk, you don't have to worry about any of that. You don't have to carry the stupid plant around. People love that, so, you know, that's another plus. So, yeah, guys, uh, I was real nervous the first couple of weeks, you know, not making any sales, just kind of depressed and, and nervous and scared and thinking I wasted all this money now. It's popping. So, and this is, you know, I mean, people are still planting plants now. People want to buy gifts for people. And I understand that, you know, um, the true plant people, they're buying plants still, you know, probably going to buy plants all winter. Um, I don't think I'm going to make a killing within a month from now. I think it's going to really start slowing down. But at this point, I, I know I could sell the heck out of plants. And uh, I want to apologize to Pam. I've been watching my language. I think uh, she said uh, my last video, Pam from Pam's Garden, great lady. I've been talking about her a lot. She said, uh, I cursed twice and I took the Lord's name in vain. And she's a big Christian woman. So I apologize for that on camera. I'm trying to watch my language. That's why I'm saying all these cutesy words instead of, you know, a little harsher words. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. Uh, I've been in a lot better mood. Um, I've been trying to catch up on sleep. Um, this week killed me. Um, I've had a couple of nights where I've been up until like midnight. Um, still a little stressed out, worrying about, am I gonna have enough to sell? Um, what do I have to bring down there? I'm trying to, I think I told you guys, I'm bringing down, I got a lot of Moringa pods and I can't eat that many. I got enough that went to seed, so I'll have plenty of seed stock. Um, to either give away, sell, or start Moringa trees in the springtime, um, or actually maybe even now, I don't know, but uh, I've been bringing those down there. I've been setting it up. I got some Moringa trees there, some seeds, some fresh pods. I've been giving the pods away, um, telling people this is how they're, they're cooked. If you guys want to cook it, you can YouTube it. Here's the pods. If you want to cook it, it's up to you. Go ahead. I'm not telling you to eat them. Not that they're poisonous, but I don't sell food there so uh you know these are pods if you want to do whatever you want you can do whatever you want but they are edible and they're a super food um i do let people try uh moringa leaves i got moringa trees there so i say hey you want to try some leaves you know a lot of people like them it's a good conversation starter um i like giving away free stuff i don't like letting stuff go to waste like i said i got a billion and one pods what the heck am i gonna do with them so been giving those away um i think people really appreciate that um and you know everyone needs to try something new once in a while and kind of cool so you know and i tell the people hey i'm selling seeds but if you want to try to dry these you know minor minor seeds from harvested off the trees so when the pods dry on the tree i pick them and grow them if you want to try growing these seeds they are fresh pods you can dry them out for a couple of months and then try to grow the seeds you got a 50 50 shot if they're not dried on the tree um, so, you know, if they want to grow them, I'm cool with that too. You know, I mean, not a big deal, but anyway, yes, yeah, so I'm in a way better mood, a little more happy. And I think I am willing to put 
even if the plant business dies down, I am willing to put my own money into it just to keep it going until the springtime. So I know in the springtime, I'm gonna have a lot of plants that are literally gonna fly off the shelf because guys, I'm way cheaper than every other plant nursery in the area. My plants are way healthier. They're in grow bags, they're mulched, they're fertilized, they're full of soil life because I grow it on these wood chips and this soil down here. And uh, you guys know my, my soil's full of worms, isopods, mycorrhiza, you know, everything you can imagine. It's properly fertilized. Um, I don't use pesticides all over the place because I don't want to kill my soil life. So yeah, everything's super healthy. It's ready to plop right in the ground and just continue to grow. Everyone else is selling plants and pots. I'm the only one doing grow bags. So as far as I know, at least. So when you plant that plant in the ground, like I said before, guys, if you buy a, a plant or a tree from another nursery, sometimes you break roots pulling. A lot of times you break roots pulling out of the pot. The roots are all tangled around the pot. It's all root bound. You plant it in the ground. They're never going to recover. When it's in a grow bag, you put the, you take the whole bag, you dig your hole, you put the whole bag in the ground. There's no transplant shock, no root damage. There's no root bound roots twisting and twisting. It's just full of nice fine hair roots and it's going to just grow right through that bag like a rocket and take off for you. And I've had a lot of people call me up a year later and said, Hey, you know, that tree you sold me, you were right. That thing just took off. I didn't take the bag off. It's unbelievable. So, you know, I, that makes me feel good, you know, selling quality plants and I back my products like that. They, people know, you know, I don't offer any returns or exchanges or anything like that. You know, if it's something cheaper or whatever, and I got a whole bunch of them and someone takes it, oh, I killed it. It's all my fault. Okay. And I'll probably give you one or whatever, you know, but, uh, I don't offer any refunds or exchanges or returns or anything because I know, you know, unless you do something crazy, that plant's going to grow. So that's just how it is. Um, so that's pretty much going to conclude this video. Um, Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, hit the bell, tell all your friends, come down to the plant nursery. I'll put the uh, address down in the description. Like I said, you could uh, type it in Google Maps on your phone um, or your Maps app or whatever, and it will pop up. You can look, you can do a Google search. My YouTube channel pops up. My business pops up. Right there. There you go. Cha-ching. That's my Facebook telling me someone wants to buy something. <laughs> so anyway, guys. Until the next video, keep growing.